Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Can, can you can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Okay, great, great. Okay. Bueno, de entrada. Eh, quiero. Bueno, me disculpo primero porque creo que no tengo una fuente apropiada de luz y me miro bastante oscuro, así que casi que unas sombras también. Eh, y segundo, creo que la acústica hoy no me favorece ya que estoy en un cuarto donde no hay muchas cosas y cuando eso pasa ya saben que se escucha un poco el eco. Así que uh, me, me disculpo de antemano por eso, creo que ya mañana voy a tener un par de cositas más por acá. Así, ya no se va a escuchar así. So... Let's begin. Just let me find the file very quickly. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. So uh, just let me find this. Give me a moment. Okay. There it is. I apologize. Just give me a moment. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to call the attendance. All right. Give me a second, please. There it is. Okay. Ada Verónica Muñoz de Fuentes. Presente, teacher. Thank you. Alexis Giovanni Ramos Rosales. Present, teacher. Thank you. Alicia Pérez Gavidia. Alicia Pérez Gavidia. Blanca Esmeralda Flores Ortez. Present teacher. Okay, thank you. Cecilio Antonio Cortez Escobar. Present teacher. Thank you. Consuelo Enriqueta Aquino de Salazar. Present teacher. Thank you. Delmi Alexandra Ramos Cruz. Delmi Alexandra Ramos Cruz. Idalia Margarita García Cruz. Present. Thank you. Just a second. All right. Isaac Adbonay Tobar. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Jennifer Nuset Arevalo Flores. Presente. Thank you. Juan Antonio Brande Paz. Present, teacher. Hello. Catherine Andreina Perez Cruz. Present, teacher. Thank you. Luis Alfredo Aguilar Beltrán. Present, teacher. Thank you. Luis Enrique Palma Alvarado. Luis Enrique Palma Alvarado. Luis Josué Valle Hernández. Luis Josué Valle Hernández. María Magdalena Méndez Méndez. Present teacher. Thank you. Marina Amaya de Mata. Present teacher. Thank you. Marjorie Marilyn Martínez Grijalva. Present. Thank you. Miguel Antonio Rodríguez Rosales. Present. Thank you. Noé, perdón, Nelson Eduardo Alfaro Roque. Nelson Eduardo Alfaro Roque. 
Nelson Eduardo Alfaro Roque. Noé Ezequiel Rivera Medrano. Present. Thank you very much. Olivia Raquel Rodríguez Benítez. Present. Thank you. Oscar Alexander Domínguez Herrera. I'm here. Thank you. Oscar Mauricio Rivera Aguilar. Oscar Mauricio Rivera Aguilar. Pablo Josué Cornejo Ramírez. Pablo Josué Cornejo Ramírez. Stephanie Brendalí Vázquez Méndez. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Okay, I'm calling some of you again. Alicia Pérez Gavidia. Is Alicia Pérez Gavidia connected? Delmi Alexandra Ramos Cruz. Ahí el grupo puso a teacher que no se iba a poder conectar. Ok, quiero ver. En WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. En WhatsApp lo ha puesto por acá. Ok, bueno, en ese caso. Ok. Um, Luis Enrique Palma Alvarado. Luis Josué Valle Hernández. Nelson Eduardo Alfaro Roque. Oscar Mauricio Rivera Aguilar. Pablo Josué Cornejo Ramírez. Pablo Josué Cornejo Ramírez. Okay, then we begin. Everybody, welcome. This is Inglés Pre Intermedio, Modulo 1, and that's me, Ivan Doñang, at your service. Once again, this is session 13, and today is June 12 of 2022 or 2022, whichever you prefer. Okay, so take a look. Okay, here's what we're going to do now. Uh, this is a snapshot, this is the first part, and this is section number five. Okay, so just a moment. Okay, here. So how are they related? Here's the idea. Listen to four conversations about famous people. How are the people related? What is the relationship between these people? ¿Cuál es la relación entre estas personas? So what's the relationship between Michael Douglas and Catherine Seta Jones? What's the relationship between Enrique Iglesias and Julio Iglesias? What's the relationship between Francis Ford Coppola and Nicolas Cage? And what's the relationship between Annette Benning and Shirley MacLaine? I am going to play the track for you. Noé says it's family. <laughs> yeah, yes, correct. Okay, family. they're family. That's true. They're family. But what exactly is the relationship? You have to be more specific than that. Don't worry, I'm going to play the track for you to listen and pay close attention, take notes, okay? And after that, you're going to tell me how these people are related. So I'm going to play the track. Here we go. Look at this picture of Michael Douglas. Can you hear that? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. Look at this picture of Michael Douglas. He's my favorite actor. Yeah, I like his movies. Is that his wife? Of course. That's Catherine Zeta-Jones. Oh, right. She's so beautiful and a terrific actress. They make a nice couple. Two. Cindy! Cindy! Sorry, Mom. That's my favorite song. Do you know Enrique Iglesias? You mean Julio Iglesias? Of course. He's one of my favorite singers. No, no. Enrique Iglesias. Julio is his father. Oh, no. I don't think I know him. 
three. What are you reading, Pete? I'm reading an article about Francis Ford Coppola. He has a new movie out. Who? Francis Ford Coppola. You know, the director of The Godfather and The Godfather Part Two. Oh, right. Do you know who his nephew is? The actor Nicolas Cage. Really? I didn't know that. Four. Look, here's an article about my favorite movie star, Annette Benning. I like her, too. She's good in both comedies and dramas. She's married to Warren Beatty, right? That's right. In fact, he comes from a talented family. Do you know who Warren Beatty's sister is? Shirley MacLaine. I don't think I know her. Sure you do. She's a movie star, too. Okay. Uh, we have some chat entries. All right, here we go. Noé no escribe por acá, pero también podemos participar. <laughs> okay, so uh, what about this one? Michael Douglas and Catherine Seta Jones. What's the relationship? What about the first one? What is, uh, what's the relationship between Michael Douglas and Catherine Seta Jones? Ada Veronica. Michael Douglas and Catherine Seta Jones and married. Michael Douglas and Catherine Seta Jones are married. So that means that she is, significa que ella es, she is? Wife. The wife. wife, correct. Okay, she's the wife of Michael Douglas. That's correct. Okay. What about number two? Enrique Iglesias and Julio Iglesias. What's the relationship between those two? Maria Magdalena. Julio Iglesias is father of Enrique Iglesias. Julio Iglesias is the father of Enrique Iglesias. That's correct. Yeah, that's true. Julio Iglesias is the father. What about number three? Francis Ford Coppola and Nicolas Cage. What's the relationship? Marjorie. Francis Ford Coppola is uncle and Nicolas Cage. Yeah, he's the uncle of Nicolas Cage. Okay, that means that Nicolas Cage is? Uh, how do you say sobrino? Uh -huh. <laughs> Nicolas Cage <laughs> is the nephew. Okay. Mm -hmm. Repeat, please. Nephew. That's the pronunciation. Nephew. And... And it's right, se escribe. Mm -hmm. It's on the screen. Aquí está. Oh. Nephew. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Thank right. You. Okay, and the last one you have Annette Benning. Thank you. Okay. And Shirley McLean, Marina Maya, what's the relationship? Yo es una pregunta con la relación anterior. Okay. Nephew, nephew es sobrino. Yes. Y para sobrina es la misma palabra? It's a different word. If you want to say sobrina, you have to say. Oops. Niece. Niece means sobrina. Niece. Mm -hmm. Niece. Niece. Nice. Nice. It's not, not nice. <laughs> niece. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So what about the last one? What's the relationship between Annette Benning and Shirley MacLaine? Huh? Does anybody know? I'm going to play that part. Okay, let's see, Marjorie. And sisters? Sister, not exactly, no. It's a bit different. Anybody else? 
¿Alguien más que sepa? A la Verónica. Maybe partner the movie. Partners in the movie. No, not really. It's different. Okay. Noé dice cousin. Cousin. Pero Noé, participemos, levantemos la manita solo por el chat. También escuchemos su voz. Okay. But no, sorry, no, no, it's not the case. I'm going to play this part. Voy a eh, poner esa parte nuevamente, únicamente la última parte para que escuchen. Comedies and dramas. Okay. She's married to Warren Beatty, right? Movie star. Okay, listen. Look, here's an article about my favorite movie star, Annette Benning. I like her too. She's good in both comedies and dramas. She's married to Warren Beatty, right? That's right. In fact, he comes from a talented family. Do you know who Warren Beatty's sister is? Shirley MacLaine. I don't think I know her. Sure you do. She's a movie star, too. Okay. So what's that? Annette Benning is married to a man. And that man has a sister. And that sister is Shirley MacLaine. So what's the relationship? Cecilio. Ambas son estrellas de cine. Oh, well, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> But let's speak English. Okay. Okay, let's see. So what, what is the relationship? You tell me. Okay, Annette Benning is married. She has a husband. And her husband has a sister. His sister is Shirley MacLaine. So what's the relationship? Maria Magdalena. No, no sé si tenía la manita levantada. Sister-in-law. Sister-in-law. That is correct. Okay, sister-in-law. That's true. Sister-in-law. Very good. Nice. So sister-in-law is cuñada. Okay, now you know the relationship between these, well, among these people right there. Nice. Lesson objective, this is 5.0. In this lesson, participants will be able to listen to a conversation about families using present continuous. En esta clase, los participantes serán capaces de escuchar una conversación sobre parentescos usando el presente continuo. So, conversation, asking about families. Okay, asking about families. That's what we have. Listen and practice. Okay, I'm going to play the track first. And after that, you're going to help me read it. Here we go. Tell me about your brother and sister, Sue. Well, my sister works for the government. Oh, what does she do? I'm not sure. She's working on a very secret project right now. Wow. And what about your brother? He's a wildlife photographer. What an interesting family. Can I meet them? Uh, no. My sister's away. She's not working in the United States this month. And your brother? He's traveling in the Amazon. Well, I need two volunteers Page to volunteer. Page 31. Sorry. Exercise 3. Okay, Marjorie and Ada. Okay, Marjorie, you play Rita. And Ada, you play Sue. Please. Okay. Uh, tell me about your brother and sister, Sue. Well... My sister works for the government. Oh, what does she do? I am not sure. She's working on a very secret project right now. Wow, and what about your brother? He's a wildlife for- Wild, Wildlife. 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 Mm -hmm. Photographer. Photographer. What an interesting 
family. Can I meet them? Oh no, my sister away. She's not working in the United States this month. And your brother? He is traveling in the Amazon. He's traveling in the Amazon. Okay, thank you, ladies. Okay, some uh, pronunciation right here. Okay, uh, Rita says, tell me about your brother and sister, Sue. And Sue says, well, my sister works for the government. Rita says, oh, what does she do? Sue says, I'm not sure. She's working on a very secret project right now. Wow. Rita says, wow, and, and what about your brother? Sue says, he's a wildlife photographer. Rita says, what an interesting family. Can I meet them? And then Sue says, and here's part of the pronunciation. Uh, he says, she says, sorry, uh, no. Okay, this is this is pronounced, uh, okay. She's like thinking, uh, no. My sister is away, okay? She's far away. She's not working in the United States this month. And your brother? He is traveling in the Amazon. José Luis nos comunica por acá que ya se conectó. Tomaremos su asistencia. José Luis, wait a second. Perdón, Luis Josué. Leyendo mal. Luis Josué. Thank you very much. Nelson Eduardo también. Me too, dice por acá. Ok, thank you. Oscar Mauricio, también. Thank you. All right. Um, let's begin. So first we have this activity, okay? It's vocabulary that we need to learn. And the vocabulary is here on the, on the corner. Perdón por lo pequeño. Sé que se ve muy pequeño ahí el, el dibujo y las letras, pero no había forma de ponerlo todo en la diapositiva. So the vocabulary is right here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You have the words cousin. That's the first one. Cousin. What's the meaning of cousin, by the way? ¿Qué significa cousin? What's the meaning of cousin? Prima. Okay, primo. Very good. Thank you. Let's raise the end too. Okay, so prima o primo. Okay, this is for boys and girls, for men and women. Cousin can mean primo o prima. Okay. Okay. And then, then you have father, you know, the meaning of father. What about grandmother? What's the meaning of grandmother? Marina. Abuela. Abuela, that's right. Then you have niece, which we have studied, which is sobrina. Then you have sister-in-law, which is cuñada. Yeah. Okay, cuñada, that's sister-in-law. And then you have uncle and wife. What's the meaning of uncle? If you want to participate, raise your hand. Ada Veronica. Tío. Tío, that's right. And then you have wife. What's the meaning of wife? Maria Magdalena. Esposa. Esposa, that's correct. Okay, very good. Now, using this vocabulary, you have to complete this. You have Andy and Marta, they're married. And you have Chris and Sarah. And you have Sam and Yumiko, Jim and Liza. There's Donna and Manuel. There's Teresa. And finally, Kelly and Jimmy. Okay. Those are the people in the family right there. So, what about this? Okay. So, here's, here's the thing. Number one. Andy is Sam's grandfather, okay? And Marta is his, his what? Ada Veronica? Marta is his grandmother. Grandmother, that is correct, okay? Andy is Sam's grandfather, okay? And Marta is his grandmother. Very good, thank you. What about number two? Luis Alfredo, can you read the sentence? Uh, Chris is Sam's father. Chris is Sam's father. Correct. Chris is Sam's father. That is true. Very good. What about number three? Who can tell me? Marina. 
Manuel is Sam's uncle. Manuel is Sam's uncle. That is correct. Very good. Thank you. What about number four? Juan Antonio Bran and then Marjorie. Number four, Juan Antonio. Okay. Uh, Sam is, uh, is married to Jun Yumiko. She is his wife. Sam is married to Yumiko. She is his wife. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Thank you very much. Marjorie Marilyn Martinez Vijalba. Uh, Sam has a brother. He is married to Lisa. Lisa is Sam is sister in law. Sister in law. That is correct. Okay. Sam has a brother. He is married to Lisa. Lisa is Sam's sister in law. Very good. Number six, Ada Veronica and then Blanca Esmeralda. Tere, Teresa is da daughter of Manuel. She is sister. She is Sam's sister. I don't think so. Cousin, cousin. Cousin, okay, she is Sam's cousin. That's correct. Okay, very good. Thank you, Ana Veronica. And then Blanca Esmeralda Flores, the last one, please, number seven. Jen and Lisa have two baby, two baby, Kelly and Jim. Kelly is Sam's. And Sam's is nice niece 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 mm -hmm. and jimmy is his ne no sé cómo se pronuncia ne nephew. Nep nephew 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 mm -hmm. very good jim and lisa have two babies kelly and jimmy kelly is sam's niece and jimmy is his nephew okay Very nice. So um, here we go. Do you have any questions about the vocabulary? Tienen preguntas acerca del vocabulario? Marina. Con la que me dijo hace un momento de, de sobrina, me dijo ni. Mm -hmm. Pero la, lo confundo el, el sonido con ni. El destornudar. Ah, eso es sneeze. Sneeze. Con la S al principio. Ahí, ajá, primero hay un sonido sneeze. Y al final también el sonido cambia, porque en este caso de sobrina es el sonido al final, sneeze. Pero en estornudar es el sonido sneeze. Ese sería estornudar. Sneeze. Mientras que sobrina, niece. Only. Gracias. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, then. No more questions. Let's move on. Lesson objective. At the end of this lesson, participants will be able to ask and answer questions using the present continuous. Al final de esta clase, los participantes serán capaces de hacer preguntas y responder usando el presente continuo. So let's begin. That's 5.3 lesson objective. Grammar focus. Take a look. Present continuous. Are you living at home now? Is your sister working for the government? Are Ed and Jill going to college this year? You have three questions. So going back, are you living at home right now? You say, yes, I am, or no, I'm not. Is your sister working for the government? You say, yes, she is, or no, she's not. Or no, she isn't. Are Ed and Jill going to college this year? Yes, they are. Or no, they're not. Or no, they aren't. Now, these are yes, no questions. So you can use, you can say yes or no to answer these questions. But then you have information questions or WH questions like these. Where are you working now? I am not working. I need a job. What is your brother doing these days? He's traveling in the Amazon. 
who are your parents visiting this week? The answer is they're visiting my grandmother. As usual, this is like uh, some very uh, oversimplified, you know, grammar explanation. So I'm going to give you a little bit more about this. This is present continuous, okay? Let's take a look, present continuous. And you have some pictures right here. In the first one, she says, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see better. I'm eating, so she is eating. She isn't reading, okay? What about the second one? You have, it's raining. The sun isn't shining. And the last one, they're running. They aren't walking, okay? So the present continuous is M is or R plus not if it's negative, and then the verb in ing, doing, eating, running, writing, etc. So here's the structure. You say I am, and then the verb in ing, he is, she is, it is, and the verb in ing, we are, you are, they are and the verb in ing. If the sentence is negative, then you have to use the negative form of the verb be. So you can say, I am not, and then the verb in ing, he is not, she is not, or it is not, then the verb in ing, and we are not, you are not, they are not, and the verb in ing. So if you want to make this negative, all you have to do is add not after the verb be, and that's it. You don't need to do anything else. So you have some examples right here. The first one goes like this. It says, I'm working. I'm not watching TV. And this is true in my case. Este es mi caso cierto. Yo digo, I am working because I'm teaching a class. I am not watching TV. Okay, I am working as a teacher. Second example, Maria is reading a newspaper. That means she's reading the newspaper right now. She isn't eating. Alternatively, you can say she's not eating. And the phone is ringing. It is ringing. Okay, está sonando el teléfono. The phone is ringing. The next one is we're having dinner. Estamos cenando. We're having dinner. You are not listening to me. Okay. No me están escuchando, dice. Dice el ejemplo, ¿verdad? No le digo a ustedes. Oh, you aren't listening to me, which is the same. And the last one, the children are doing their homework. All this is present continuous. Nada nuevo lo han estudiado con anterioridad. De hecho, aparece al final del básico uno, ¿verdad? So nothing really that complicated. So take a look. I'm going to send this to you via WhatsApp so you can have it. Let me find it. Let's see, print or immediate one. Okay, you can check what's up, it's right there. So um, take a look at this, present continuous. You use the verb be, am, is, or are, plus the verb in ing. That means something is happening now, okay? And here's the timeline. This is the present, this is the past, and this is the future. So if something is happening in this moment, then you use the present continuous tense. For example, she says, I'm working, and that's what I'm doing now. I am working right now. I'm teaching a class, so I'm working. She's wearing a hat. They're playing baseball right now. I'm not watching television, okay? So you have three affirmative sentences and one negative sentence. I'm working, she's wearing a hat, they're playing baseball, and I'm not watching television. ¿Cuándo sucede todo esto? Now, in the present, as we speak, mientras hablamos, okay? So you have some examples right here. Please be quiet. 
I'm working. That means I am working now. Second example, look, there is Sarah. She is wearing a yellow dress. That means she is wearing a yellow dress now in this moment. The weather is nice. It's not raining. You can also say it isn't raining. No está lloviendo. The next one. Where are the children? You say they are playing in the park. Okay. And then on the phone, we are having dinner now. Can I call you later? Estamos cenando en este momento. ¿Le puedo llamar luego? We're, we're having dinner. So uh, the next one, you can turn off the television. I'm not watching it. Puedes apagar la tele. No la estoy viendo. I'm not watching it. So that's how you use this. Going back to regular size, I'm going to send this to you via WhatsApp. Okay, I just sent it to you. Do you have any questions about the structure present continuous? Alguna pregunta, duda acerca de la estructura present continuous? No questions? Okay, everything is good. All right. There are some spelling rules that we need to know. No solo es de ponerle ing al verbo, no funciona así. Aunque esa es la primera regla. Add ing to most verbs. For example, work becomes working. Study becomes studying. Eat becomes eating. Now, if you see here, you don't change anything. You just have to add ing. Work is w-o-r-k. So working is w-o-r-k ing. Study is s-t-u-d-y. Studying is S-T-U-D-Y, I-N-G. And then eat, E-A-T, becomes eating, E-A-T, I-N-G. So normally you have to add I-N-G to most verbs. La gran mayoría solo se le agrega I-N-G. But then we have this, take a look. Now for verbs ending in E, you have to drop the E and add I-N-G. For example, you have the verb come. Come ends in E. So what do you do? You have to eliminate that E and then you add ing. So come becomes coming. Okay, no E. Dance, it ends in E. You change it for ing, dancing. Okay. And then you have the verb write, write ends in E. So you have to eliminate that E and add ING, writing, okay? Okay, the pregunta por acá no es, see, sería to seeing, okay? Buena pregunta, veamos, sí. La regla nos dice que si el verbo termina en E, por lo general hay que cambiar esa E por ING, excepto con los verbos que terminan en doble E, like agree and see. If it ends in a double E, don't worry, nothing happens, just add ING. Only that. No tiene que cambiar nada. See, seeing. Mm -hmm. Ok. If it ends in one E, for example, dance, it has one E, then you change this for ING. But if you have agree, for example, this is double E, don't change anything, just add ING, and that's it. Okay, that's the rule right there. Okay. Next rule. Now, this is probably the most complicated of the rules right here. For verbs ending in a stress syllable with the final combination, consonant, vowel, and consonant, you have to add an extra consonant and ing. What is this? Pay close attention. Pongan todos mucha atención, porque esta regla es la más, digamos, uh, delicada de todas. 
for example, you have the verbs run, stop, and control. Okay? They all follow a pattern. Todas siguen un patrón. For example, you have run. Run has only one syllable. And because it has only one syllable, that means that this syllable is stress. Este es un verbo que solamente tiene una sílaba. Y como todas las palabras tienen una fuerza de voz, si solo tiene una sílaba, entonces ahí es donde va la fuerza de voz. Ok. So you have run. Run is a one syllable verb and it's stress. And it ends in consonant, vowel, and consonant. Consonant R, vowel U, consonant N. So what happens? The two conditions have met. Condition number one, it has to be a uh, stress syllable. Condition number two, it has to end in consonant, vowel, and consonant. So run becomes running with a double N. Okay? Run becomes running, double N. Second example, you have the Noé. Hola, sí, tengo una pregunta. Este, ¿y cuando son los verbos irregulares? Verbos irregulares. Sigue la misma regla, de hecho. Los verbos irregulares solamente eh, hay que ponerles eh, particular atención cuando estamos utilizando ya sea el pasado la forma en pasado o la forma en past participle. Pero la forma en ing, ahí no importa si es regular o si es irregular. Ah, ok, sí, tenía esa duda. Pensé que este, ahí cambiaría la forma, dije yo, pero de, no. de hecho, no. Vaya. Por ejemplo, aquí tenemos en pantalla algunos ejemplos. Come y write son verbos irregulares. Como lo es run también. Y están combinados acá con dance, stop y control, que son verbos regulares. En realidad no tiene nada que ver si es regular o irregular. Por lo menos no para hacer la forma en ING. Ahora, la, para el pasado y para los past participles, ahí sí. Es sumamente importante saber si el verbo es regular o si es irregular. Ok. So, again, you have uh, stop. Stop is a one syllable verb. One syllable. Como solo tiene una sílaba, entonces en esa forzosamente recae la fuerza de voz. Stop. Stop. So, condition number one. It's a stress syllable. Condition number two. It ends in a consonant, vowel, and consonant. T-O-P. So, the two conditions have met. You say stopping double P. Double P. This is easy when the verb only has one syllable. Esto es fácil de hacer cuando el verbo solo tiene una sílaba, pero aquí viene lo que se vuelve un poco complicado. What happens when the verb has two syllables? ¿Qué sucede cuando el verbo no tiene una sílaba sino dos? For example, you have control. Control. How many syllables are there? You count two syllables. Control. Control. Two syllables. So, take a look. The final syllable, troll, is stressed. La fuerza de voz va en la última sílaba, troll. Como sabemos, porque se pronuncia control, you know, control. It's control. So you have control. So condition number one, the final syllable is stressed. La última sílaba lleva la fuerza de voz. Condition number two, it ends in consonant, vowel, and consonant. So the two conditions have met. Controlling with a double L. Veamos un ejemplo donde una de las condiciones no se cumple. 
you have the verb, you have this verb. How do you pronounce this? Do you pronounce it visit or visit? What is the correct pronunciation? Visit. Visit. So is the stress at the beginning or at the end? La fuerza de voz va al principio o va al final? Is the stress at the beginning or is it at the end? Al inicio. It goes at the beginning. Okay. Ahora veamos la regla. The rule says if it ends in consonant, vowel, consonant, yes, one of the conditions has met. Okay. Una de las condiciones se cumple, pero no se cumple la otra. Porque para duplicar la última consonante, la última sílaba tiene que ser stressed, debe llevar la fuerza de voz y terminar en consonant, vowel, consonant. Como en este caso es la primera sílaba, la fuerte, this it, no hay regla, así que solamente añádale ing. No vaya a duplicar nada, porque no es la última la que lleva la fuerza. En el caso del verbo control, aquí sí, termina en consonant, vowel, consonant. Y además, la última sílaba es la fuerte. Esa sílaba donde va consonant, vowel, consonant. Así que en este caso sí, va a agregar una consonante adicional y luego ing. Les doy estas reglas más que todo porque he notado que en muchos textos de inglés a veces las reglas van incompletas. No sé por qué. Si nosotros no sabemos, por ejemplo, esta parte de la regla que nos habla sobre la fuerza de voz, entonces nos confundiríamos bien fácil pensando que todos los verbos que terminan en consonante, vocal y consonante, hay que agregarle una consonante adicional cuando no es así. Solamente es si terminan en esa combinación. Y si además esa última sílaba es fuerte. Si no es la fuerte, entonces no. Ambas condiciones deben reunirse. Veamos otro caso. You have the verb complete. Complete. Complete two syllables. The last syllable is stress. Complete. Tenemos ya una de las condiciones. Pero ¿qué pasa? No termina en consonant, vowel, consonant. Termina en vowel, consonant, vowel. Así que no hay nada ahí. Además termina en E. Así que ING. Completing. Okay, that's the rule right there. Do you understand the rule? A la Verónica. Teacher, uh, repeat please. Uh, pronunciation control. Uh, okay. This is. Okay, I'm going to. Just a moment. This is control, control. Then you say controlling. Okay, yo ya iba a decir controlling. Controlling. <laughs> no, 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 this is controlling. Thank you, teacher. Que es muy parecido, de hecho, pero bueno. Okay, okay, you're welcome. <laughs> Si una persona controlling, un controlling es una persona controlling, de hecho, sí, es, es controlante, pero sí, así es. Okay. All right, so no more questions right there. And final rule. Now look, for verbs ending in IE, otra que termina en I, IE, change IE for YING. For example, you have the verb lie. Lie ends in IE. 
In that case, you have to change IE for YING, lying. You have the verb die, another verb that ends in IE. So you change IE for YING. Finally, you have the verb tie. You have to change IE for YING. Can you give me a moment, please? Just a moment. Sorry, I had a small emergency. Okay, so that's the rule. Now, let's check the meaning of these verbs. What is the meaning of lie? What is the meaning of lie? ¿Qué significa lie? A la Veronica. Mentir, mentira. Mentir, yeah, that's correct. Okay, lie means mentir. However, <laughs> sin embargo, however, lie has two meanings. It's two different verbs. Take a look. There's the verb lie and the verb lie. Son dos verbos, okay? One of them is a regular verb and the other one is an irregular verb. Okay, the regular verb lie means mentir. And then there's the other one, irregular verb lie. Yacer. Decir estar acostado. O en posición de estar acostado. That's, that's it. A ver si lo escribí bien. <laughs> Son estas palabras que no ocupan mucho. Mm -hmm. Yes, yacer. Si sí, está bien. <laughs> okay. That's the meaning of it. So lie also means yacer. Las tumbas a veces, si ustedes tienen oportunidad de ir a un uh, país de habla inglesa, a veces en las tumbas dice, here lies, y el nombre de la persona. Aquí yace, fulano de tal. Uh -huh. No es que aquí mienta, ¿verdad? no, no miente, ya está muerto. So, here lies, aquí yace. So yeah, lie has two different meanings, okay? So, do you have any questions about the rules? Consulta acerca de las reglas. Do you have any questions about the rules right here? Okay, Maria Magdalena. Eh, teacher, no sé si lo mencionó, the pronunciation life is different. Lie, the pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Lie, lying. No, pero en el de regular ver y irregular ver. It's the same pronunciation. Oh, okay, thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. I'm going to send this to you. Okay. Okay, can you just, uh, okay, just a moment. All right, Isaac Albonay, please tell me. Okay, uh, teacher, en esta última que estábamos chequeando, no hay alguna otra condición especial, ¿verdad? Tal cual, si existen estas dos vocales, este dictongo, eh, eh, se aplica lo que es esta regla, ¿verdad? Y ya. That's correct, that's correct. Okay. En otras palabras, tendrían que tener cuidado cuando el verbo termina en I. Si termina solo en I y nada más, hay que cambiarla por ING, que sería la segunda regla. Ahora, excepción, si termina en dos es double I, entonces no hay que cambiar nada, solo agregar ING. Y la tercera, si termina en IE, entonces sí, hay que cambiar IE por YING. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so no more questions about this. What are we going to do? Take a look. Press and continue us. What are these people doing? Use the verbs to complete the sentences. The sentences are eat, have, lie, play, sit, and wait. So number one, what is she doing? Maria Magdalena. She is eating an apple. She's eating an apple. That's correct. She is eating an apple. Correct. You have to use the verb E and then the verb in ING. That's very important. Number two, Ada Veronica. He waiting for a bus. That is good, but something is missing. Falta algo ahí. Waiting. Waiting está bien, pero antes de waiting nos falta algo. He is waiting for a bus he's waiting for a bus okay very good por acá alicia nos dice presente okay thank you he is waiting for a bus that's correct what about the next one luis alfredo they are playing soccer they're playing soccer okay that's right they are playing soccer very good what about number four Number four. What is that? Oscar Mauricio. Oscar Mauricio, number four. He is. He is. Yes. Do, do me a favor. Hágame un favorcito. Veamos. Complétenme la 4, 5 y 6. Se me ha presentado una pequeña situación. Ya regreso. I'll be back in one minute. En un minuto. Ok, eh, compañeros. La número 4 sería he's, he's lying on the floor. He's lying on the floor. Él yace en el suelo. Lo que le explicaba con lo, con lo que se está acostado, el alguien. No sé quién más habla de la quinta, las cinco, quién la quiere decir. Eh, Yo. Ok. They are ha having breakfast. Sí, they having. They having breakfast. Ellos están tomando. No, they are. Le falta el. el they are. Uh -huh. Ellos están tomando el desayuno o ellos desayunan. Ok, alguien más de number six. She's. Sí. ¿Quiere No, no, no. Sit down. Sí, va bien, va bien. Sí, verdad, like she's sit down. Sit down. She's. Sorry, on the table. Yeah, she's sitting sí. on the table. Yes, yes. I'm back. Oh, She's sitting on the table. Okay, so number four. What is number four? Okay. What is number four? Okay, Luis Alfredo. And the number four is he's, he's lying on the floor. He is lying on the floor. That is correct. He's lying on the floor. Very good. Number five. Mm -hmm. Idalia Margarita. Uh, they are having breakfast. They are having breakfast. That is correct. And the last one, number six. What is it? Oscar Mauricio. Okay, teacher. Um, she is sitting on the table. She's sitting on the table. Very good. Tomo asistencia aquí nada más. Tell me Alexandra. Está por acá. Tell me Alexandra. Okay. Luis Enrique Palma Alvarado. 
Luis Enrique Palma Alvarado. Okay. All right, everybody. Um, we're going to stop here because it's 9 p.m. Thank you very much. And we will continue tomorrow. Okay, Oscar Mauricio and Pablo, díganme. Present teacher. Okay. Uh, Sorry, teacher, quedó levantada la mano. Ah, perdón. Okay. Pablo me dice, sí, ya tomé su asistencia. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Okay, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night.